Ladies and gentle bitches, welcome to my top 10 albums of the year video where I'm going to be listening to every single top 10 album of this year in a row. So strap in for a 16 hour stream because we're getting into it. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No, but we are going to be uh, going over my top albums of the year. I think it's a... Uh, kind of incredible that I'm able to do this this year because it's the first year that I've been able to actually track how I feel about albums in a categorical uh, online sense. This is, of course, I'm talking about the website albumoftheyear.org. You can follow me on there. Uh, we're about to hit like, I think 900. Yeah, we're at 850 followers. Bro, I'm trying to get up like my boy Brad Taste in Music. He's the one that showed me this website. And honestly, I, uh, I've just kind of been addicted to like reading about how other people feel about music. And if they can maybe change my opinion or open my mind or maybe, you know, uh, just enlighten me a little bit. I just, I love reading these reviews. Some, some of them are freaking hilarious. I try to make mine a little bit more informative and, uh, you know, information based i guess just or, or opinion based on my own but dude i've been having a really good time man and i'm excited to kind of tell you guys about my top albums of the year so starting off with num numero 10 we have the hosier album dude yeah unreal unearth can we get a little round of applause for hosier baby this album truthfully kind of blew me away man like it was my first Hozier album. It was such an eye-opening experience because I'd only ever really heard the singles from him. Like, you know, Take Me to Church. I was a little worried that I wasn't gonna understand all the lyrics and whatnot because I know he can get a little bit, you know, poetic, but truthfully, I'm happy that I held on for as long as I did because man, when this guy gets the right chords underneath him, personally, I feel a little bit more attachment to his like gospel R&B style rather than this kind of like rock centric force um, even though there are like you know highlights in the rock area for sure am I gonna get in my Anthony Fantano bag right now sorry just feeling a little a little bit of the melon coming on right now this is one of the albums that encapsulates an entire experience sort of like an epic story right but instead of you know, reading, you're jamming and you're swaying, just swimming through these soaring vocals as Hosier poetically sings about his woes and his hoes, respectfully, because he likes to talk about love a lot, dude. Top-notch instrumentals with very poignant productions to support each direction Hosier felt. He goes bluesy, then he goes folk, 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 folk. Then he goes rock and even some 80s pops 80 and even some 80s pop towards the middle of the album. What can't this man do? The man's pen game is like watching an oil painter recreate a piece from scratch, literally. Sometimes slow to start but always worth the wait. Ooh, okay. You see see even listening to Hosier got me writing in my little, you know, Shakespearean way. <laughs> the run from DeSelby First Time and Francesca is a spectacle. I tended to avoid the middle of the album, though, on re-listen, really just staying around for Eat Your Young and All Things End, my favorite track on the album, All Things End. And the end of the album wraps up the theme of healing in a really beautiful way. Uh, First Light just really nails it. I added seven songs to my favorites, so all in all, I think it's a huge dub. So yeah, magical, truly magical. Starting off with the falsetto, oh, the echoey guitar, and 
his vocals to it. Oh, come on. Just this pre. Oh, and it just breathes you in so nicely. Oh my god. It's, it's so good. It's so good. It's that perfect little blend of like purposeful melody driven lyrics and music combo. And god, it just feels so good. We're going to continue actually with, with the next album on my list. Okay, which is, I don't have any of these pulled up, sorry y'all. <laughs> Editor, please make these suspenseful, suspenseful. Yup, oh yeah baby, number I nine. Woo! I pay attention to things that most people ignore. Mr. Dan Nigro, like Miss Olivia Rodrigo, thank you. Are we even for real? Guts just nailed it this year. I, I didn't, I had, I was worried. I will say I was worried she wasn't going to be able to replicate, replicate or evolve the sound from Sour, Sour. But dude, oh my God, she did, at every turn, this album just chucks it up another notch. I was almost kind of like truthfully missing like the, the, the bops, you know, from Sour from this album, I felt like it didn't like deliver on like the the huge rock sound that kind of, you know, mesmerized the entire world when she first came out. But honestly, going back through it now, I don't really miss it that much because she just kind of upped the emotional content of the lyrics and the production. It almost feels like it's matured in a really great way. She has beaten the sophomore slump. Where Sour felt more like external world building, Guts felt much more like interpersonal development. The familiar themes are more mature, and the vocals are still soaring high, and the classic pop rock sound that Olivia is known for has a fancy new sheen on it. A fancy new Charlie Sheen on it. The playlisting of the album is a little chaotic and awkward, but... Think about it. When you're a 19, 20 year old, that's all your life really is. Good choice, bad choice, lesson learned. Maybe? Probably gonna fuck it up again. <laughs> Repeat. That's so funny, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Um, there are definitely some goofy lyrics, but man, I just love how Olivia writes. Two plus two equals five isn't groundbreaking, but actually... It might just be. <laughs> she walks that perfect line between ear catching and relatable. The production still feels so garage rock and weird with crazy wacky solos and muddled harmonics. Sometimes the, the distortion on her vocals is a little too intense, but fuck it, that's rock and roll, baby. A few times though, Olivia is definitely treading over ground that I feel like she has been on before. I also feel like I'm hearing her go back to the, some of the same uh, melodies and sound textures from before as well. But I don't think in the grand scheme of things, that's too bad. I feel like she's still, you know, in her second album of developing her sound. And that's probably just intentional in that way. In a lot of ways, this is totally her sister album for Sour. More mature, a bit less boppable but heading in a strong direction for a big finale i hope that her next album after guts has a lot of breathing room for its creation bravo olivia and team my faves were bad idea right vampire making the bed get him back the grudge and pretty isn't pretty and my when my one skip was ballad of a school uh, home ballad of a homeschooled girl, and overall the score I gave this one was an 85. By the way, sorry I didn't I didn't tell you what I what I felt of Hozier. Uh, I gave Hozier an 84 for the album, which is pretty damn good, dude. I feel like 85 is pretty good, you know. That's like a perfect midway album. Like that's truly how I feel about it. 85 is the perfect midway album that is good enough to throw on at really any given time that's not super duper heavy in the emotional category but if you're feeling it you still might cry a little bit but if you're not you're just gonna have a good time you're gonna rock out and have fun and it's not like a, a, a heavy emotional investment to dive into for me now getting into my eighth pick we have an album that i most recently just listened to 
on stream from the Japanese house. In the end, it always does. Yes. Go. This is where I start to put y'all on, you know? I see everybody in chat. What is this? I didn't hear this during the year. Yeah, me neither, bitch. Then I just found it. so good oh my god it is so good dude i love it i love it so much dude wow let me read you what i wrote about this album y'all because holy shit it has been on repeat for this last week because i've just been obsessed dude it is so good first of all a simple but refreshing take on a breakup album with gorgeous electro-pop highlights from the 1975 zone, George Daniel. This album is a sweet bop after sweet bop all the way through, achieving a wonderful mid-tempo listen and ending on a heartbreakingly realistic note. Oh my lord. I love beautiful music. This checks just about every box in that category. Amber's voice is so gentle but heavy and with the instrumentals are nothing short of an ensemble of aesthetic, a melancholy masterpiece in aesthetic songwriting and production. Favorites, Touching Yourself, Sad to Breathe, Boyhood, Friends, Sunshine Baby, One for Sorrow, Two for Joni Jones. Skips, Ixadesical Reminder, whatever the fuck that one was, and then Baby Goes Again. Other than those two, fantastic album. 87. This album is the album you go to when you don't want to, like, you know, blow your ears off, but you want to get a little bit of that 1975, mm, but with a sweet and delicate female vocal. Oh, it is so nice. I just... <sighs> underrated man underrated just a good time and if it if it hits you in your feels you know it's doing the right thing moving on into my sixth well no wait ten nine eight seven my seventh favorite album of this year another one that i just so happened to recently listen to because we were going over past albums yet again it is the pink panthers heaven Knows. Oh my lord. You know what? Usually I hate mosquitoes, but god damn it, this one just does it for me. On a Monday, can I see you? Shit! I my numbers? Cause I, I want to. to. I know it's annoying. How, How much I, I do? Spending you the day that I want. The day that I want. The day I want. Yes. Yes. I see chat. I see you chat. Bopping off. Popping. All of your chatussies. I'll take it from the top. Bop after bop. With the emotional depth and maturity, I couldn't be happier to hear. Listening to Pink sing is like dropping into the matrix with a surfboard made of digital flutters. Such soft instrumentals paired with upbeat drums makes for a beautiful contrast of energies. So much personality comes through her lyrics as well when you take the time to listen and dive in. She is clearly a romantic and obsessed with making gorgeous music and herself happy. She's also obsessed with you. Kingdom harps tight beat to the max and I'm shaking ass. The change in tempo and style after the interlude in the album shows me how Excellent, the track listing really feels and reflects how she's changing her musical style like she's needed to change in her romantic life. Can't wait to hear what comes next. Favorites. Mosquito. Nice to meet you. Ophelia. Feel complete and blue. Skips. Internet boy. I gave it an 88. Pretty damn good, dude. I gotta hear another one. You can't just get one Pink Panther song and move on. First of all, they're too fucking short. But you gotta hear another one. Ophelia is so underrated. <sighs> Where 
where's where where is it? Listen to this intro. She's taking her time. So tell me what did I do to deserve you? Kidding me this way? I can't lose the fear. Oh my God! Like the vocals are just recorded so perfectly. And you know it's crazy that like when people talk about artists who are so good at tracking vocals and so obsessed. Billie Eilish is like one of the first people you start to think about. But dude, I wanna hear, I wanna see Pink Panthers track her vocals. Cause I know she is in there with a goddamn scalpel, bro. She is cutting that, sh she is cutting all of those little silences out because her vocals are just so perfect, dude. She is truly a perfectionist. I've watched a few interviews. We have an interview that we watched actually after we listened to this album on Patreon. And, dude, she said she's a perfectionist, and I get it, dude. 88 for my girl Pink. Let's go, dude. My next album is one that I also started listening to this artist for the first time this year because mainly of peer pressure from my boys up in Nashville. Shout out Adam. Shout out Zach. Shout out my boy Bobby. Go watch the... Katy Perry video on the channel if you want to see who Bobby is, but I got to get the other two boys on the channel this year. That's definitely going to be happening in the, new, in, in the new year. But this one comes in with our first 90% wall socket underscores. I'm not even joking, not all like that, but pretty much non-stop fun. That entire album, holy shit, dude. I love me some hyper pop, but this album kind of breaks away from that a little bit, to be honest with you. Lots of real instruments, lots of folk elements kind of coming in, changing the way the songwriting kind of hits you. And dude, it's just so refreshing. Review time. Like I said, first 90 for the year. Wow. True emotional electronic music. This is what I've been waiting from. This is what, there's so many typos in these. I'm so embarrassed. I'm not even like actually really reading it wrong right now. Like my dyslexia isn't kicking in. I've just typed it so poorly. I can't read or write. I'm sorry. This is what I wanted from the hyperpop space a little bit. Y'all, this is so special on so many levels, but especially sound design production and the lyrics, dude, the pen game. This was my first Underscores album to listen to all the way through, so I wasn't expecting a huge narrative. But damn, I feel like I got a damn near debut album. Each and every song has such a unique twist with ear candy production, sound design matched with real emotional vocal performances, a sample like Good Luck that tracks all the way through the album. Oh, sign me the fuck up, dude. My favorite jams are when the drums get into this slower mid-tempo pocket, kind of near the back half of the album, and we get her really just letting the tracks breathe and filling in with some great guitar playing. The whole record transforms from this in-your-face punk record to this super cinematic and artistically sad piece of self-reflection and gender identity. So the album is kind of a mixed bag of a lot of different vibes going on, kind of from like early Kesha party pop to like nearing country western blues with electronic inspirations. I find myself gravitating to more of the melodic and instrumental songs rather than the super long electronic chaotic ones. But still, the fact that it's all self-produced as well as just a testament is just a, is just as well as a testament to how talented underscores are. What a wonderful emotional introduction and I cannot wait to hear more. This is one of the biggest flop videos on the channel this year. And I wanted to bring this one up because, dude, if you just want to, like, dive into production and just learn how to produce for yourself, even if this isn't the type of music that you want to produce, studying this kind of stuff just opens your mind so much to the possibilities of what you can create. Like, dude, it's so fucking good, man. I, I, I have since 
listening to this, gone back to listen to Fishmonger and honestly, a lot other, uh, uh, other songs as well. And I didn't even realize that I actually favorited to the Green Hearts Club, one of the sing, uh, not a single, but just a, a random single that uh, underscores dropped this year. It's one of those albums where like, I don't want to tell you a whole lot about it. I just want you to like go and listen and just experience it. It's just a fantastic album, dude. What is next? Oh shit, there's 12. Fuck. I, oh my God, I'm so fucking stupid. See, I can't. <sighs> Oops. And so not only can I, oh my God, this is so painful. Not, not only can I not read and write, but I can't even fucking count because there's 12. I've been reading my top 12 albums and not my top 10. God damn it. Okay. Fuck me, dude. The Fitness Gram Pacer Test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test. Lord have mercy, I'm about to buzz. <laughs> Hozier was 12. Olivia was 11. Japanese House was 10. Pink Panthers was 9. Wall Sagas is 8. And the one I'm about to cover right now is number seven. You know what? Maybe this is a good thing that I fucked this up because I, I, I need some good vibes. You know, I need some, I need some great energy. So here we go with my number seven album of the year. <sighs> the boy geniuses, the little baby boy, little baby boy, baby, baby geniuses, boy, the little, the little baby record boy geniuses. Like, look at this, dude. Look at this. It's an all-night drive from your house to There are barely any misses, dude. I mean, there's just barely any misses at all, dude. Like, I... This is truly the album that I feel like I just... I fell in love with each of their different writing styles. Like, man, that's just so good. Like, they are just... Like, I truly... I feel like I really do understand why they are called like a super group is because they're each individual member is so crazy talented. Like, Oh my God, dude, the guitar work on this album. And the specific kind of like production elements, like splitting it like this. Okay. Just cause I don't have a, uh, a check by them doesn't mean they're a skip by the way they're just ones that i didn't add to my playlist but dude in this way i still feel like it's a fantastic record so my review says i think this is what the kids would call friendship goals <sighs> you can feel the love and care put into each and every song with lush reverbs folky instrumentation warm vocals and an atmosphere of acceptance we can all feel differently and emote differently, but at the end of the day, all we can do is try to understand each other. Oh my God, they're snapping. Vocals soaring high and low with gorgeous harmonies that are so in sync, you'd think they're blood related. Yeah, dude. The production of each song is also top notch with each moment emphasized to its most emotional degree. I cried like a goddamn baby multiple times. The back half slows down really nicely and settles you into a nice soothing cup of acceptance. I feel like I need to brand this one emotional goddamn content. And it's sitting at my list at the top with a 91, dude. So good, man. So freaking good. But I feel like everybody loves this fucking album this year. This is not a pick that I feel like is surprising at all, truthfully. And here we go with maybe another one that might not be you know, too much of a, of a surprising one, but still one that I feel like is so important to talk about. Said I was gonna take some flowers to my neighbor, but I what, what happened? Ran out of time. Oh, Haley, no. Oh, no. You know me, you know me. I love to run. I'm, I'm always running out of time. An epic return. Good Lord, dude. Paramore just does it again. Their first record in, what, six years, I believe? Not gonna lie. Took me a second to listen, you know, before I realized that, like, when Paramore drops, they're just back, baby. Like, they just, they have that unique rock-centric 
alternative vibe that is just constantly evolving. Like the fact that this album slaps so hard, I wouldn't even be mad if they waited another like five years to drop another album. Their more mature approach to songwriting and the indie influences make this album feel like a perfect Pokemon evolution, baby. That's right. Haley not only blows me out of the water with her belting and the subtle moments feel just as satisfying. She could literally just, and I would be like, yes, thank you very much. Some more of that on some garlic bread, please. I could listen to Haley sing the goddamn telephone book and I would go gaga over it. Taylor York's guitar is orgasmic. I mean, extraordinary. Dude has got the steez of the century with some of these riffs. Zach Farrow's drums provide a perfect backbone to support the other players. And when he shoots, he fucking scores, baby. The drums make every single Paramore project so dancey. And that is personally what I feel like I've realized when it comes to Paramore is I just love to shake ass. And when it's an alt-rock band that can do that for me, I go fucking bananas. Phenomenal project. And I think a contender for the best alt-rock album of the year. They're probably going to take the Grammy, if not Foo Fighters. 92. Yeah, dude. 92. I didn't do faves and I didn't do skips for this one because truthfully, I, they're all faves, dude. I mean, come on. Listening to Paramore just reinforces the fact that I'm just going to know if I fuck with a song the first, like, three seconds. Like, every single beginning of these songs is just in its own world, kind of iconic. Listen. One note. And it sounds like a weird thing, but then you get this drum beat. Ooh. What's... Oh, that's weird. What's going on, right? Ooh. And then the groove. And that's This Is Why. Then the news. War. Just starting off war, dude. Running out of time, you get this riff. Which feels like a broken clock almost. Like you already get the aesthetic of like, oh, this is a weird funky space, right? Sakem Sa. Straight chords with. Instrumental, just two chord, memorable back and forth. You're, you're not going to forget that two chord the entire time because that pretty much is the entire song. Big Man, Little Dignity. The first softer palette. Oh, you get these big bass, bassy brass. And the flutes in the back, dude. They've never done this. This is nice. Oh, it's just beautiful, bro. You first. Comes for you first? My God. And I didn't, honest, and I didn't even bring up the deluxe. The deluxe for this album that dropped with remixes from other artists. Dude, incredible project. You gotta listen to the entire thing if you haven't already. It's Paramore, baby. I don't know what else to say. And with my fifth pick, a little, uh, little, maybe a little new artist you might have heard from this year. I just found out that uh, Mr. Barack Obama also is a fan of this artist. <laughs> I see you, Barack. You got taste, brother. I like it. Ladies and gentle bitches. Ooh. My fifth pick for the top albums of the year. When they say she get it for her mama, I'ma say you fuck her right. right. Body boot is on polite. Don't be in a humble type. Tell me, is you down? Cause I'm trying to Dude, you can't just imagine Obama dancing like me to this song. Like in his undies, you know what I mean? Like, Boxers, you know, but like, bro, Michelle's gonna join it. Come on, bro. Look at this. Look how long my review is for this. I could not shut the fuck up about this album, dude. I gave it a 92. Yes, I gave it a 92. And I say, what a massive W. Huge dub. Top to bottom. Electronic, funky grooves spanning reggae, neo soul, and classic R&B that catch your ear and refuse to let go. This was my first dive into Victoria's original music 
and I was still coming in with a higher expectation because of her history with Miss Ariana Grande. But man, the musicianship is strong, dude. She carries this slim project very well with many different topics in each track, from rolling up a J to pop and locking and ending with the subtle sentimental moments is a three-way masterpiece that paints a very clear picture of who Victoria Monet is. Damn, dude. Dude, my pen game is kind of going off right now. I feel like the biggest run in the album is from All Right to Stop Asking Me For Shit. All Right leads you in with an addictive beat and vocal delivery, excluding, exuding confidence like no other, leading into Cadillac, a pimp's anthem, which completes the sexual vision of Monet owning her sexuality and stating ladies can be pimps too, transitioning into how does it make you feel, wrapping your ear with war a warm embrace of love after these first two tracks, it feels so nice to hear the softer, gentler side of Monet's writing. Then we have the biggest heater of the album on My Mama, and my God, there is something in that song. Something. Then we move on into a bit of a slower pace with I'm the One, which is not only as in-your-face confidence as the first tracks in the run, but more of asking her partner to see what she sees in herself and to choose her. It also has my favorite visual lyric from Jaguar 2. I could be riding horseback towards you, slow motion on the beach, titties bouncing and everything. I gotta hear that. I, I'm sorry. That is just, that is, come on. I could be riding horseback towards you, slow motion on a beach, titties bouncing and everything. Oh. I could be the one you sit. Dude, I'm sorry. That is just an unbelievable pen game. Unbelievable. Unreal. To wrap it up, to wrap it up, you guys can read this entire review if you if you want to. This this is kind of a long, kind of a longer one. Overall, the end of the album is super heart uh heartfelt, touching with Earth, Wind, and Fire kind of coming along with Monet's uh, Monet's daughter Hazel the youngest ever Grammy-nominated singer, I will add as well. It makes for a very lovely moment with that song. Uh, and then Boom Goodbye hits you and you're bopping your ass down the street. She's ending on kind of a hype note as well. And I love that little change of pace. Listen to this album right now or whenever you have the time because it is definitely going to be most worth it. Um, my faves were Smoke, All Right, Cadillac, On My Mama, I'm the One, and Stop. And my skips were Party Girls and unfortunately Hollywood. Uh, not because I don't like the song, but just because I, I, when I'm listening to this album, I, I just kind of want to bop all the way through it um, because the bops and the highs are just so high. This is definitely one that I go back to on the car rides a lot, dude, because it is just so fantastic. For my number four pick, we got to go to Mrs. Caroline Polachek, Desire I Want to Turn Into You. Yes! Come on! We're on the island! With the Zelda beat! The sun said if I regret For all the feelings that in your arms Oh, if you like artsy, well-produced pop, dude, with just the coolest sound design, ugh! Like, was that a baby laughing? What was that, Caroline? I need answers! Dude, talk about another vocalist, kind of like Pink Pantheris as well, that takes so much care with her vocals. Oh my god. How does your ass not just shake out of your pants, dude? Like, it's taken everything in me to keep my clothes on when I listen to this album. Good Lord, she is the moment. The kind of vocals that make you question how the hell she's doing it and nailing it every run in between. Production keeps pushing the boundaries of what is melody versus what is percussion. Drums that not only slap, but also bang. Utilizing the kitchen sink DIY style of building these songs with just vocals and then adding all the elements throughout is peak what I consider pop execution. Pop is like a successful lobotomy. Caroline Polachak proves that, okay? That's truly, truly, okay? Flowing through beautiful string sections into synthy exploratory type instrumentals, the album feels like an entire experience. The explosive front section calmingly floats down into the back half, just like easing you into a coma-like state 
filled with ear-pumping drum and bass phrases. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's, that's good. Did I write that? Oh, my God. Indisputable talent in every category. One of those albums where you just keep coming back to hear more and more detail in every single song. There's not only a bagpipe solo, but also a didgeridoo solo. I mean, f- come on, dude. Need I say more? Favorite songs. Welcome to my island. Bunny is a rider. I believe. Blood and butter. Billions. Also, sunset. And also, no skips. Because truthfully, I mean, it's just so good. I mean, maybe crude drawing of an angel is a skip. Maybe. And fly to you. But everything else, I mean, come on, man. Yeah, I love that album, dude. 93. And just like that, we're in the top three. And my third pick of this year is a man like no other. Well, he's close. His name sure is close. To yours truly, that's what I'm talking about. We got Troy Savon, baby. Woo! Do you feel it? Hey, hey, hey. I do do your tush. To your tush, it's tush. It's not touch, it's tush. This album is absolutely spectacular, dude. I mean, I am just blown away by the passion and dedication that Troy has put into this album to create such a warm and welcoming transformation from his old material. God, dude, the dance energy is just, dude. 95 from me, 95, dude. Oh, I feel the rush. This is Troy's most fluid and satisfying project to date, and I feel myself becoming obsessed, rotating through 80s disco into neo-soul instrumentals, then fading out with some indie movie soundtrack vibes. It's flirty, funky, and fantastically produced. The chemistry between Troy and the production or producers is undeniable. Every song feels like such a leap into Troy's emotions, and the production only heightens his expression. And when it comes to dance pop, lyrically, Troy fits in substantial, a substantial amount of story and vulnerability with each verse. My favorite thing about the album would have to be Troy's vocal performances, though. He is such a smooth talker, and on these club bangers, he actually gets to belt a little bit. And on the soulful beats, he gets to swoon you in with his tone. He just has so much personality through his delivery that you get invested in what he says, even with a kick and snare slamming in the back. Pause. Something about his vocals kind of just makes you want to give him a little smooch. IDK. (laughs) Bruh. The sample usage in this album might turn some people off, but personally, I think everything is done with the samples here is tasteful and integrated well. This is a huge album of the year contender for me. Very proud of you, Troy, for this. (laughs) Like I know him. (laughs) Faves, one of your girls. Still got it. Got me started, silly and honey. Skips. Goose egg. Yeah, goose egg. The only reason that it isn't a 100% for me, truly, is because it is all just one kind of genre. He does a lot with it, but man, I just have a fantastic time playing that album all the way through. Thank you, Troy. Gotta love some YouTuber music, baby. All right, all right. Now we get into the top two. And I will say, over the past week, There has been some changes in my list. This was not always my top two for this year. This top two actually just sneaked into my top two recently because of the goddamn bird app. But dude, the love of this artist that I've been seeing, so many accounts like have followed me on there that have just been like daily, like artist name, insert artist name here, daily posts. And it's like, okay, 
the love is real. Let me, let me go revisit this album real quick. And my God, it's a fucking heater, dude, all the way through pretty much. Still a little, you know, in my personal opinion, maybe a little lengthy, maybe could cut two songs, but dude, goddamn chaperone, dude. Chapel around Mrs. Chapel Rowan. The rise and fall of a Midwest princess. Holy shit, dude. Playboy. Playboy. Pretty Bardo. What you see? I didn't know. Show me. So slow down, sit down, it's new. It's so horny. That's all it is. It's just. I just love horny music, bro. It's like the strongest emotion, dude. It really is. I just, I'm a sucker for that fucking innate feeling of just seeing somebody falling in love and being like, you're the fucking one. Yes! And that's my baby right there. You know, that's, that's what I got to say. And dude, honestly, man, shout the fuck out to Dan Nigro. Like two of his albums, obviously, you know, Olivia Rodrigo, already kind of a huge star, but he also produced this album. And he even went on record and, like, had a huge thankful moment on Instagram, I believe, that was, like, thanking Chapel for, like, getting him so out of his, like, comfort zone to make music like this. And, like, dude, it just, it has such a high payoff. It's so good. Like, oh, my God, man. Let me just read you a little bit of this review. She's here. She's queer. And the melodies are ringing in your ears. God, what an absolutely personality-packed debut album. It's a debut, dude. It's a debut, okay? Top to bottom, just unadulterated, horny, sexy pop fun. Produced by the homie Dan Nigro of Olivia Rodrigo's Guts and Sour, hearing all of the wacky synths, stadium drums mixed in with this very identifiable rock sound makes this record feel like nothing I've ever heard before. My God, dude. Chapel or Kaylee delivers hugely emotional vocals, hugely, good one, Troy, hugely emotional vocals, carry most of the slower ballads on the record and add a nice cherry on top for the bangers to end with. You can just tell she's a damn performer. And when the music reflects that self, that's fucking magic, baby. That's magic. Magic. Seriously. I really do think my only issue is that as cool as both sides of the coin she performs with the ballad and the fun club bop at a certain point in the album, the instrumentals and the drops feel a bit overused. I disagree. I'm a, this guy's a fucking idiot. Okay. I know I'm reading my own review, but this guy is fucking dumb. Okay. I, it, it, it is not overused. It is not overused. Okay. It is fantastical. And I love the, the personality in there. Okay. I, I, they go on to say, not me, totally not me. I personally love that she's so horny, but at a certain point, some of those types of songs might get skipped further down in the listening line. What the fuck was I talking about? I was, dude, I, w- I might have been off the henny for this one. Still, my God, so many songs added to my Green Hearts Club, and what an incredible artist to find so young in their journey sounding like this. Dude, she has the kind of vocals that sound like fucking... Like Cindy Lauper, like it's it's not sounding like Cindy Lauper or like Cher or anything, but it's like that old school style of vocal. I just love it, dude. Favorites: Red Wine Supernova, Coffee, Casual, Super Graphic, Ultra Modern Girl, Pink Pony Club, Naked in Manhattan, Skips, Picture You, California, and Guilty Pleasure. Yeah, dude. I mean, the bops on this album just go so unbelievably hard, and I just. The mid-tempo shit, like casual, oh my god, man. She's, she is going to explode this next year. If this second album comes out, and it's got this much love and dedication put behind it, it's, I mean, she's opening for Olivia right now. I can't even imagine. Dude, oh my god. Chapel. Oh, it's so good. It's so good, man. God, you gotta listen to it. You just have to. Pink Pony Club makes me fucking cry now. Oh my god, bro. And then you get ma- naked in Manhattan. Laser beams.
Dude, I love the bass. Touch me, touch me, touch me. I would literally buy tickets to go see Olivia Rodrigo just to go see Chapel. Like, I love Olivia. Don't get me wrong. She's in the top 12 of this year, you know? She is. But dude, this album is just so special. Holy shit. Okay, get, get to the number one. Your phone's on 4%. Okay, let me do that. Let me do that for you, Maria. Okay, let's get in to my number one album of the year. Wow. This album, y'all. Oh, this one's special. This one crept up on me, dude. This was like an early listen in the year, and I still didn't really even, I didn't even know this artist when I, when I listened. My number one album of the year is and continues to be Calico by Ryan Beatty. Yes, dude. Oh, my. I'm taking the Do Flamingo glasses off for this one because he deserves it. Ryan fucking BD, bro. 98 for me this year. Music time, bitch. <sighs> this album just made my musician heart sing, man. Oh, deep down. It took all of California. <sighs> To remind you why you came I came? Yeah On a radar camera <laughs> It's out of my hands What can I tell oh, The little beat coming in in the back I'm losing it <sighs> I'm just having a laugh Oh, it's so subtle And the strings in my faces <sighs> I'm making faces Oh, I'm making faces too Unbelievably gorgeous production all the way through, man. Produced by Ethan Gruska. He's worked with Adele before. You just feel part of his soul in this shit, man. And I love the jazzy influences with the folk singer-songwriter twist with these acoustic instruments. His vocals feel like angels singing, dude. Yeah. The gays just got it this year. They do. I covered one of these songs. I covered White Teeth this year. That's how much I love this album. I got, I dipped back into the acoustic covers. Dun, dun. White Teeth, bro. White Teeth? He's talking about me. Your brother. Multiple times listening to this album, I was like, he's talking about me. Shut up, dude. He's talking. Oh my God, so good. Gotta read you a little bit of this. Whew! This album floored me. This was my first time listening to a project from Ryan Beatty and I cannot believe it took me this long. Fuck. Ryan's voice is like a warm, cozy hug. The instrumentation is produced with so much love and care that at points the instruments made me well up inside. Ethan Gruska, who has worked with Phoebe Bridgers and so many more, has done an incredible job at capturing the emotion felt by Ryan's writing and lifts it to an angelic level. Simple acoustics with flurries of soft synths and subtle yet impactful percussion. Ryan's delivery is also reminiscent of a Frank Ocean sound, who I have also only heard singles from, by the way. <laughs> just controlling and commanding each verse and chorus to bend to his very will proves that Ryan is a voice to be listened to, but also understood and under mm, my God, I don't know how else to put it. Jesus, this feels like the start of a classic being born. And I cannot wait to hear what comes next from this man and the team behind this record. P.S. Bonnie Vera legit is playing ukulele on the last track. So yeah, the cosign is deserved. Favorites, ribbons, bruises off the peach, cinnamon bread, Andromeda, and white teeth. Yeah. 
I do have a least favorite on here, but I don't have any skips. <laughs> wow. Yeah, dude, this album is just special, bro. Go listen to it. Just, I don't, I don't even want to play you anymore because I don't even want to spoil it. Just go, just go listen to this album. Lay down in your bed, shut every light off, close every window, and just listen with headphones. God, that album is so fucking phenomenal. It's so good, man. Oh. But that will wrap up my top 12 albums of the year. Go listen to these albums. Go listen to these albums if you have not already. It's been a good year, man. People say that pop took a dive this year, but honestly, man, I don't know. Maybe maybe my taste isn't just pop, but, but geez, y'all. I think we got some pretty, pretty solid picks this year. Let me know yours in the comments below, of course. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.